All okay. right, is that any better? Now see if you can see us and tell us. We're gonna wait for the comments to come in and see if we can get on live. And if we can, we're gonna praise the Lord. It's starting to get dark in here and we've got a lamp that's not as bright as it normally is. Uh, Denise, uh, that's okay, watching, you can you see us? Is whatever it working? Whatever you did, whatever you did. It's not even my phone, it's his. I don't even know what we're doing. But anyways, it's starting to get a little darker in here, so I just want to give you the latest prophetic word that the Lord has given me. And Hi, Steve. Just in case, now just in case you happen to see, it worked. Hello, Judy. Um, the landscape way, not the long way. What, what does that mean? That way. This mm. way. Okay, Jordan, honey, if you're watching me again, Thank you. tell mom if it works. Okay, Pam says it's working. Debbie, how's it going? Are we, are we the right direction? I could always stand on my head, but it could be very scary. Hi, Cynthia. All right, so if it's working, I will get started. Looks great. Praise the Lord. Okay, we'll get Good. started. And Congratulations I'm gonna you... on having no idea but fixing it. <laughs> so, like, I'm not the techiest person yeah. in the universe, and the person that's directly in line behind me is right there. And the, so, reason, the reason why we're doing this tonight is because Lindsay has had another prophetic dream from the Lord. I have, and so while I'm trying to get it back, I, what happened is, as you know, a lot of times it happens in the middle of the night. So since it did in the middle of the night again I the other it. night, I wrote it down you know how I do, type it into my phone. So that's what I'm doing. It kind of went sideways on my phone. So this is a day of technology, praise the Lord. So howdy to all of you. And I'm so grateful you stuck with this. So here is what the Lord said to me. And this was pretty um, kind of out of the blue. I want to give you a little quick review if you want to go back to the last one. Because the Lord was saying, stop receiving underrated information. Mm -hmm. Information comes as excellent, average, below average, poor, and ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Ridiculous is out of the root word ridicule. And he was saying, um, we're not praying by begging. Instead, call on our covenant rights. And the Lord said, remind me of my promises. You have to know them to remind him of it. Stop praying underrated or stop receiving underrated information. So, that was the last one. If you want to go back a couple of weeks, you're going to see it. So here's what that happened. Was in July. Right. Here's what happened the other night. The Lord said this. You accept the norm rather than expect a miracle in certain areas. If you accept the norm, he was talking to me. If you accept the norm rather than expect a miracle, you're going to get just what you're expecting. Well, of course, I the felt, I, you know, I understood that. And then he said this, if X, this was weird because I had never thought about this. If, if expectation were money and you got what you're paid for, the results will speak for themselves. Yeah, I'll say. If expectation were money and you get what you paid for, the results will speak you for yourself. You probably would be expecting more, wouldn't you? <laughs> yes, and so I was sitting there saying, Lord, blah, 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 and the Lord was saying, you're getting what you expect, and if expectation were money, you get what you paid for. And you know, many times, have you ever used the word gypped? I don't know if people say oh, that sure. anymore. Yeah, but I, if got, you didn't, I got gypped out of something. I got gypped yeah. out of something if you yeah. didn't get what sure. you were supposed to. And he, then the Lord went on to say this, he said, whatever you expect, that will be. Miracles, now this is what, what uh, this is what I thought interesting because remember Ephesians tells us to fight the good fight of our faith. Yes. And he said, that's a fight we can engage in. Fight the good fight of our faith. Well, he said this, miracles generally require a fight. The good fight of your faith. Say that again. Miracles generally require a fight. A fight. You mean you've got to stand up and fight for your miracle. The good fight. But don't just fight a fist fight. You fight no. the good fight of uh, your faith. faith. Satan will not just hand the miracles over. Satan will require... It, it, Satan will not just hand the miracles over. Mm. It will require a battle. That's why you, you put on the armor of God. You don't wear an armor to a picnic. You wear an armor to battle. And this is war. If you just accept the norm, that's what you'll get. If you expect a miracle, you'll probably have to go to war with the good fight of your faith. But it's still a fight nonetheless. And then he said this. This I thought was interesting. Ooh, 
I, the Lord was really challenging me and I'm going to pass that on and challenge you. The battle is not over because you got tired. The battlefield is no place to do nothing. Ooh, the battle is not over because you got tired. The battlefield is no place to do nothing. You have to fight the good fight of your faith until you have what it is you're fighting for. Stopping mid-miracle will most likely end in no miracle. Fight the good fight of your faith by declaring the word all day, every day, until harvest day. Let me go back and read that again. Satan will not just hand the miracles over. It will require a battle. That's why you put an armor, that's why you put an armor of God. That's why you put an armor of God. Because you don't wear an armor to a picnic. You wear an armor to battle. And this is war. If you just accept the norm, the norm is what you get. The battle is war. And he said, you'll, you will, if you accept the norm, that's what you'll get. If you expect a miracle, Satan will go to war and fight. And you must fight with the good fight of your faith. I'm sorry, I think I read that wrong earlier. The battle is not over because you got tired. And then it said, I'm sorry, it slid up on my phone. Let me make sure I read this right. The battle is not over because you got tired. The battlefield is no place to do nothing. You have to fight with a good fight of your faith until you have what it is you're fighting for. Stopping mid-miracle will most likely end in no miracle. Now listen to this. Fight the good fight of your faith by declaring the word all day, every day, until harvest day. Not until quitting day, all day, every day, until harvest day. I'll tell you what, I felt like I got refreshed and rebuked all at the same time. And when she, when she gave this to me, I felt like I was rebuked from the Lord too, because I think there were some things in my life that I had quit praying over. And I, I had said things like, well, I guess that's how it's always going to be. You know, it's, it's going to be this way. Yep. And I, I don't have nothing I can do about it. That's not true. I took that as a rebuke from the Lord as well. Lindsay. And a, a rebuke is not a bad thing. No, 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 a, it, not it at was, all. It's, I don't mean it. It was a bad thing. It was a corrective thing thing. Yeah. You know, the, the Lord said, whom he loves, he chastens or corrects that actually the word means redirects. Yeah. And your, da your daddy did a sermon once about redirecting as if to avoid a train wreck. So if you are going this way and it's headed in the wrong direction and you're heading for, let's say some kind of a, oh dear, oh Lord, help me Jesus type of a moment. And he redirects you where, oh dear, oh Lord, help me Jesus becomes a thank you, Jesus then that's a good thing. That's not a bad rebuke. That's a redirect. And he said, fight all day, every day until harvest day. Now, I think that meant something, especially to me, because I understand there's a scripture that Jesus said he's the Lord of the harvest, but it's not like we go begging. And that's, let me go back to the last prophetic word. He said, don't pray begging. He said, pray calling on your covenant rights. That's Remind expectation. Me. Yes. Remind me of my promises. You have to know them to remind me of them. And then he went back and he said, um, let's go back to what this, the one, one prophetic word ago was, was a, so, a stop sign when he said, stop receiving underrated information. Information can be excellent, average, below average, poor, or ridiculous. And ridiculous can be the root word of ridicule. And aren't we seeing some ridiculous things now more than ever? I really believe that sometimes, it's, I'm going to say the Lord said this to me, and, and I'm going to pass it on to you, and you receive it how you want to receive it. But I think because I have seen so much, it is not about what I see, it's about what he said. It's not about what I see, it's about what God said. And because I think I will say I was getting... You know, the Bible says, be not weary in your well-doing. You'll reap if you faint not. You'll reap in due season. What do you reap? Reaping is harvest. Well, he, then he goes on and he said, pray all day, every day until harvest day. And I really believe it, it took me back to when my granddaddy, we were on a farm where we could grow Corn, we could grow, oh my goodness, we had tomatoes, we had corn, we had potatoes, you we had apples, apples. Yeah. we had an apple, kind of an uh, apple orchard and all that, where we could go, but you didn't want to do it before harvest. Why? Because it would be sour, it would be no good. We used to say in Michigan, the corn would be knee high by July, 
And then, you know, it would be, we'd watch it onto there. And the Bible very clearly said, you know, first you get the blade, then you get the, you know, the, the, the ear in the blade. And so I think sometimes it's a, it's a production. First you have, you know, the stalk and then you get the blade and then you get the ear in the blade is a process. And if you try and take it out before the process is finished, it's not going to be much. But you've got to stay there till it finishes. You have to stay there till it finishes. Now, I'll tell you at my age, we that's my cat. We <laughs> used to have, um, we used to. His name is Big Boy. Yeah, he's big, he's almost 20 pounds. <laughs> he's a baby. Um, so we had this, we had this deal at our house that we would grow the corn, knee high by July. And then when it harvested, we would use that money for our school clothes and whatever we grew and harvested that, that determined, you know, woo, big shopping day at 50 cents a dozen. That's how old I am. 50 cents a dozen. But you know what? You didn't want to mess it up because if you messed it up, you messed up harvest time. And if you mess up harvest time, the domino effect starts falling. But God was saying, pray all day every day until harvest day and it's not time to quit mid miracle okay you remind me of a story you might have right. to tell a story go right ahead i'm interrupting your prophetic you word may. no i've said it that was it when when uh, when Lindsay and i began having children our first daughter jordan uh well, Lindsay always put her in the car seat and you don't want to tell in the, in back, the back of the car seat. now at that time Lindsay was driving a two-door car that had one of those foldable seats you had to fold the seat forward to get in the back remember that that kind of car some of you old enough to remember that well, Lindsay, I got rid of it as soon as I could Lindsay, when I had a Lindsay, car seat to put back there. Lindsay was putting Jordan in the back seat one day and got her in the, in the car seat. And when she put the seat back down, it smashed her foot. Of course, Jordan began to weep and wail because Lindsay really hurt her foot, didn't realize it. And she started crying. And since she realized what she had done, and Lindsay started praying. And Jordan started like I saying, said, got rid of the car. Jordan started saying, pray, mama, pray. Right? And Lindsay prayed, pray, mama, pray, mama. And pray, mama, pray, mama, pray, mama. He kept praying and kept crying. And Lindsay said, well, how long do you want me to pray? And Jordan said, until the pain stops. Now, that's what I hear you saying, Lindsay. Don't stop mid-miracle. Don't stop until that child's foot isn't hurting anymore. And that's what you did. God was saying, you don't quit praying because you get tired. You don't get praying because you didn't see the results you wanted. Or tired of doing the same thing. And he said, you don't pray. Oh, and then I think I missed this line telling you this. You don't pray once and then get tired or get into fear. Well, that's what I'm talking about with that story. Don't pray once or get tired or get into fear. The battlefield is no place to do nothing. Yep. You have to fight the good fight of your faith until you have what it is you're fighting for. Stopping mid-miracle will most likely end in no miracle. Well, a lot of people watching right now, Lindsay, have, have dreams and visions that they perhaps have just given up on. They stopped praying about it because it, it's, it, 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 the, it's too hard. In the middle, they get tired. And I missed this telling you this before. The Lord said this. Well, let me finish the fight, the good fight of your faith by declaring the word all day, every day until harvest day. And then there was one more line. Momentary rhetoric will never result in permanent results. Wow. I had to go back and read that like a bunch of times. Read it one more time. Momentary rhetoric will never result in permanent results. The Lord was telling me he doesn't want my blah, blah, blah lip service that has no faith attached. It has nothing Just but fear few, and worry a attached. Few, a few words in a moment. Rhetoric. Oh, Lord. Oh, me. Oh, my. Oh, me. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, me. Oh, my. He said momentary rhetoric will never result in permanent results. And so I really had to stop and study that word. And I, I, I got to Richard and I said, Richard, I, I want you to study this with me and tear it apart with me. Because I believe some of the things that we've heard and seen and done and maybe are almost, I'm going to say almost exhausted listening to, may have taken a lot of our fight the good fight of your mm -hmm. faith out of us. And I believe, you know, it's, it's where you've got, you've got something coming up all the time, whether it's a new strain of this, whether it's a, uh, an election of that, or whether it's a this or a that, you know, or whether it's, you know what they say, you know, at the end of the month starts another month. By the time you pay the rent or a, a payment of one month, you know, come 30 days, 31 days, you got to do it again. 
So while all of this is like cycling, we can look at that cycle and quit mid-miracle. We can get weary in our well-doing. But God said, if you will not be weary in your well-doing, you'll reap in due season. So he said, pray all day, every day, until harvest day, and no momentary rhetoric. And he said, the battlefield is no place to do nothing. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying you fight like, what do they say, fisticuffs? Yeah. You fight the good fight of your faith. You're not, your battle is not against people. And a friend of mine was talking to me about a battleship, and they had this phrase on it where they said, permission to come aboard, sir. And the response was, permission granted. God has given us permission to come aboard on his battlefield. The permission is granted to fight the good fight of our faith, to put on the armor of God, to use the word of God, to go into the heavenlies and to declare and decree and to begin to speak the word of God. And the battlefield is no place to quit mid-miracle. It is no place to do nothing. So I want to encourage you today. If you feel discouraged, I don't want you to feel bad about it. I want you to feel refreshed about it. I don't want you to feel discouraged in fact, that's why I'm here, for you to feel encouraged. God wants us to get up, to square our shoulders, permission to come aboard, sir, permission granted, permission to come into the throne of God, permission granted. You enter his gates with thanksgiving in your heart. You enter his courts with praise, permission to come aboard, sir, up into the battlefield where the Lord is fighting the good fight with us permission granted and it is time for us to get on our face to get in our prayer closet to get on this feed or whatever it is permission to come up into our prayers permission granted permission to exercise the good fight of our faith permission granted and i believe it's so exciting i believe god was saying be careful lindsay be careful lindsay don't give up. Don't get weary. Be careful, Lindsay. I don't want you to give up too soon. Don't quit mid-miracle. Fight the good fight of your faith. Well, remember what my dad would say to you, Lindsay. Yeah. Stay, Stay in, in there, there and fight. fight. He would say that to me. All the, Maybe there's a pattern here. You know, it is maybe easy he to faced, get weary. He faced a few battles and yeah. he never quit. And when, quit he would, miracle. and when he would be facing a battle, I'd pick up that phone. Oral, I got a word for you. What? What do you tell me all the time? Stay, Stay in, in there, there and, and fight. fight. But it's fighting the good fight of your faith. Don't get weary. Be not weary in your well-doing. You reap in due season if you faint not. So I also believe there's strength in numbers. I also believe that we can join forces. One can put 1,000 to flight. Two can put 10,000. I also believe that Mark 11, 23 and 24 talks about speaking. So what are we going to speak? I believe we're going to speak, speak strength and power together because the Bible says where two or three are gathered in my name, I'm in the midst of us. And then he turns around and he talks about, very clearly talks about coming into agreement. So let's come into agreement, not with the problem, but with the problem solver. Let's come into agreement, not with the problem, but with the solution to the problem. So right now, in the name of Jesus, I pray for you, for God to minister healing to you, for you to get up permission to come back into the battle, fighting the good fight of your faith. And I hear God saying, permission granted. Let's get back. Let's get back on track. Be not weary in our well-doing. I pray for you physically. I pray for you financially. I pray for you spiritually. I pray for you in every area of your life. I pray for jobs and better jobs. I pray for your physical body, for healing and health and wholeness. I pray for, this one said diverticulitis. I pray for diverticulitis to be healed and any, any branch of it like diverticulosis or anything else to be healed. I pray for, someone just said they were in the hospital, for somebody named Duffy, the last name. I pray for Iris, for Henry, Angelita, Jennifer. I pray for Ellen. I pray for permission for healing, sure. permission granted in the name of Jesus. Pamela, Rhonda, for Mike. your entire family. Mike, Robin, <coughs> excuse me, please. Um, Mauricio, 
um, star. star. I pray for God to Stevie. work miracle signs and wonders. And I am hearing God say permission granted. God, I'm expecting a miracle. I'm asking permission to expect a miracle. Boom, permission granted. I'm asking for healing. Permission granted. Asking for God's financial blessings to be poured upon us. Permission granted. That's what I want us to get into saying. And Diana, hallelujah, amen, in Jesus' name. Kathleen, praying for you. Can you read those? Shirley, Surely. praying for you. Surely. Um, amen. Dr. Lynn, praying for you. Uh, Carolyn. Carolyn, praying for you. Achilles tendonitis. Renee, Renee praying for you. EJ. Uh, EJ, praying for healing in your hands. Linda, Linda for back pain to go. And Grace, Grace. for your 11-year-old uh, child. Rachel. Rachel praying for you. Lisa, permission granted. You know, I'm going to be thinking about that all night. Lisa, praying for <laughs> Jeff that. and be cancer free. Uh, Carter, Cindy, Cindy mm -hmm. praying for you. Barbara, believing RV coachman. I think it said to sell. Robin, praying for you and people who are trying to buy houses, sell houses, rent houses. You know, they keep saying there's this shortage. You know, the last time I looked at gas prices, I was like, what? bug-eyed and you know and now they're coming down but then they could be going up you know what god is not moved by the gas station and lindsay shortages are man-made god you need has to understand not that given god doesn't have shortages that. god said i will supply you oh i have to tell you something ken copeland just said okay. exceedingly abundantly far above anything we dare ask or think Kenneth Copeland in the Southwest Believers Conference was, that was last week. talking about us and talking about your daddy and saying that his granddaughter's named Lindsay after me, which is true. And um, he was talking about one of your dad's very first buildings. And Kenneth, of course, is, you know, he's a very, 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 very young man in his 80s. But he goes back to your daddy when he was probably in his 20s or 30s. Yeah, about 30. And he was talking about your dad's building being named Abundant Life. I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. I am praying for God's abundant life. If you look up those words, um, it's 3 John 2. It talks about excessive, exceeding. I love that word abundant. It's not lack and depletion. God did not wake up this morning and say, now what's the price of gas in Tulsa? <laughs> well, truth be told, the price of gas in Tulsa has come down. I don't know where it is well, where you live. It's down 30, 40 cents. And, and God didn't say, hey, down 30, 40 cents. That's not what God said this morning. He said, he sent his son, Jesus. Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. In this world, you may have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. Somebody said, praying for his son with migraine headaches. I command them to go. When I was a child, maybe six-ish, and all the way into my early 20s, I had migraine headaches. Your daddy laid hands on me and, and said, you'll have them about three more days. And I'm like, that didn't make well, we any were, sense. You were already married by that point. Yeah. He was in her mid-20s. And I, I, you know, why didn't he say, go right now? I don't know. He said about three more days. Mm -hmm. Truth be told. I have never had a headache like that ever again. Ever. Now, yeah, stuff comes and That's goes. Been 40, 40 There's been kind years. of weathery stuff. Those migraine headaches, I have never had another one in probably close to 40 years. So I have, I, you know, someone asking me to pray for headaches. Oh, yeah. In the name of Jesus, I pray for migraine headaches to go. Anything in go. your head, your brain, your eyes, your face. Anything that is unlike God in your, your hair, your ears, your hearing, your throat, um, thyroid, uh, elbows, uh, anything on your physical body. I pray for you to be healed. Permission to expect a miracle. Permission Maybe. granted in the name of Jesus. Permission for a financial miracle. I believe God is saying he'll supply all our need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus, which is another way to me saying... Permission granted in Jesus' name. Lindsay, stay in there and fight. And fight. The good fight of your Praise God. faith. Praise Fighting God. that was someone's praying for daughters. Um, I some kind of pressure, but I don't know if it said blood pressure. Um someone said, God Rachel, bless us. I received that. Thank you. Dottie. Heart, lungs, asthma, headaches, Dottie. Permission for the manifestation in the name of Jennifer. Jesus. I am praying for God's highest and best for you. And I believe Lori. God is saying permission granted to pray that Pinky. prayer. Pinky's watching. Oh, that's cute. Amy, 
I am praying for Mona. you in Jesus' name. I'm going to let you close out this prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. According to <laughs> Psalm 107, verse 20, which says, He sent His word and healed them and delivered them from, it, from their destructions. According to that word, I pray over you tonight, right now, live. I send the word to you for healing. Healing from every sickness, every yes. disease, every fear, every doubt, and anything that's unlike God. I bind that in the name of Jesus and pray for healing to begin now. And I will not quit mid-miracle. I will not stand in the middle and do nothing. I will fight the good fight of faith, Lindsay, until I win in Jesus' name. Amen. And you may be saying, how do I fight the good fight of faith? That sounds really cool. How do I fight the good fight of faith? I want to do that. All right. The Bible says faith comes by hearing. And you're hearing tonight. Hearing the word of God. Now, if faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God, you can go look in Hebrews chapter 11, a lot of scriptures on faith. Get a concordance. Go and um, look up. I use Strong's concordance all the time. Look up the word faith. Grab a hold of those faith scriptures and begin to decree and declare the word of God. Faith comes Amen. Not by loud. hearing the word of God. I believe God is moved when we declare and decree his word. He said he watches over his word to perform it. So that's my expectation for you. And I am so grateful that you joined us tonight. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being a part of this. And oh, and Richard's saying, yeah. okay, we have some fun words out because I have finished Discover Your True Worth and I'm starting a new one. So if you want this one, go to our ministry website. You can go to if, richardroberts.org or yeah, anything if, like if that. You've you not want... yet, if you've not yet received your copy, I got a copy of Lindsay's book, Discover Your True Worth, go to richardroberts.org and order your copy now. This is a phenomenal book. There's a lot of stuff in there about faith. So go figure Discover that out. Discover your true worth. And it's been on the Christian and, Bestseller list. And expect a miracle. Can I have permission to expect a miracle? Absolutely. Permission granted. Stay in there and fight, Lindsay. <laughs> fight the good fight of your faith. Thanks for watching. Good night, us. everybody. Good night. Bye-bye for now.